Hey everybody, Greg Kazillo from Kazillo.com. I wanted to go over some new stuff in Adobe Lightroom 4 and mainly the develop panel. Now, at first look, oh, and by the way, you might notice my voice is a little bit off today. I'm a little under the weather, but I still wanted to get this video to you. So, develop panel. At first look, you're going to say, man, Greg, this thing's the same. There's no differences. Why am I spending extra money on another copy of Lightroom when it's the same thing? Well, it's not. And the key is this little exclamation point down here. Uh, what that's going to do is update your photo to the new process. Uh, what, what, what is the new process? That's where Adobe makes changes to their algorithm that, up, that, that basically processes the photo and makes it look better. Pulls more data out, brings more highlights back, whatever it may be. So when you click that exclamation point, it's going to give you some options, but in this case, I just want to update just this one photo. Now, if you wanted to go backwards, you can always come down here to the camera calibration panel and then choose 2010 or 2003. So, in this case, we want to stay on 2012, and we see, voila, we have highlight, shadow, whites, and blacks instead of exposure, brightness, contrast, saturation, clarity, and all that good stuff. So, uh, you know what? That was the wrong set. That it was exposure, recovery, fill light blacks. That was the right one. Okay. Anyway, watch my histogram when I highlight, when I mouse over different areas here. Now, your exposure, uh, I think this is a little bit deceiving. I'm not sure why they're only highlighting the midtones right in here in the middle because exposure is really pushing around everything and not just the, the, the midtones. Um, but anyway, these other ones are actually pretty much accurate, although they are do kind of affect everything, so I guess it makes sense. Um, highlights, so you see that's the brighter whites in the image. Okay, Your shadows, that's your deeper blacks, it's this area right here. Your whites, your brightest colors, your first stop of information, way over here. And then your blacks over here on the left side of the histogram. Your clarity, vibrance, and saturation are all the same and they haven't changed. Now the next change, and by the way I'm going to show you how to use this stuff. Next change is in the tone curve. If you come down here you can actually choose when you click this little button right here click the stop editing point curve you can actually go from editing your highlight, light, dark, and shadows to editing in individual channels, red, green, and blue. And that's a huge, huge change. It's a really good change that Adobe put in here. And so this will give us a lot of control over an individual image. And this isn't really about making your photos better. It's about giving you more options, more stuff that you can play with, more changes, more um, basically more options of, of, of uh, different ways to edit your photos. So let's go ahead and edit this photo. Our uh, first thing I like to do, especially in an image like this where I know it's going to need a lot more saturation uh, and uh, contrast, is to go to my point curve and hit strong contrast. That is going to be my number one thing that's going to help and kind of get me um, give me a big jump. All right. Next thing, again, I need to saturate all these colors, and I don't want to just grab this saturation meter and drag it over because it just looks like crap. It just looks like you just added saturation and that's it. And I, I want a, I want a true contrast and I want truer colors rather than just adding a bunch of, of nothing contrast. And again, even in the vibrance slider, vibrance slider, sorry, uh, it just doesn't look right. So let's make it look natural. All right. So we need to make stuff darker. So we that means we need to bring our colors to the left alright so we want everything to saturate a little bit now it's getting a little bit too dark overall I believe let's add some more contrast and that's looking good now let's bring our exposure back and that's looking pretty good that's looking nice and natural it's not too oversaturated um, you know I could still edit my sky and make it darker now one thing we can come down here and if we needed to hit some more in our curves, we could.
I think that's nice. And another thing, we can still come down here and hit our individual colors. All right, so if I did want to pop the sky more, I can do that. Although in this instance, I think it was looking pretty good. Um, yeah, that's too far, so I'm going to reset those. But say I wanted a little bit more in these greens. And just think of luminance as just darkening or lightening colors. Probably the easiest way to think about it. And let's go even farther on those. And, eh, you know, I think it was fine as is, but it gives you options, basically. You know, it's all about those options on how to make those changes, where to make those changes. Actually, that's not too bad right there. Alright, so, um, I think we're about good. Yeah, I think we're good here. Let's see what happens with my blacks. See, there we go. We, we get rid of our blacks and we start bringing them back. Way too much, way too much. We look in here and it's starting to look real blocky. You know, there isn't a lot of stuff in there. A lot, there isn't a lot of data in there. Uh, let's even zoom in and show you. It's just, it's, it's too much. Um, when we get down in here, it's just too much and it doesn't look good. You know, you're, you're losing way too much information in there. Sometimes clipping blacks is good, but in this image, we can't, we just can't afford to, to lose that. Just, it looks too weird. Um, looks too over-processed, basically. So, overall, I think this is a, a good edit. I do like it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put up a before and an after of this image up on the website. So, take a look at the before and the after from editing here in Lightroom uh, 4 with the 2012 process and comparing that with Lightroom 3 and the 2010 process and see which one you might look uh, might like better. There might be some images where you're better off switching back to the old way and it's definitely even taken me a little bit of time to get used to the highlight shadow white and black idea versus the old way and you know with brightness and um, recovery fill light blacks. Uh, this is um, it's a different way of thinking and I think it's going to take a little bit of, of time to work with it but as I showed you you can always switch back to the old way just by hitting 2010 right here. So it, it is a nice option. The last thing I'm going to mention here in the develop panel today is the sharpness, noise, and moiré. Now if someone has a moiré photo, which is typically in clothing, uh, like a tight weave jacket or a men's coat or a women's dress or something like that, if you have some a moiré pattern that you can uh, photo, a raw photo that you can send me, I'll gladly edit that. I don't have any, so um, somebody wants to send that over, that'd be great. Um, more a, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'd gladly go over that and show you how to fix that with this or see how good it works, but I don't mean to edit from. Uh, noise and sharpness. Basically what this is doing is allowing you to make those changes in certain places and spots of the photo. So, say if there's a lot of noise in the sky of this photo, I could just draw my, oops, why did I just turn it off? I could just draw my history, or my uh, gradient okay and then turn up or down my uh, noise slider here and it would get rid of noise now obviously there is no noise in this because it was shot at a very low ISO so it's not something that we would want to add um, same idea with the adjustment brush here you have your uh, sharpness noise and more a brush uh, so you can you know make those changes individually in in smaller areas so if I wanted to darken this area down here I could do that and you know what let's do that real quick I'm gonna bring my exposure down a little bit and make my brush a little bigger by the way shortcut key for the brush is right bracket and the left bracket right above your inner key whoa that's too much I really want a tiny, tiny bit. There we go. Eh, doesn't look very good. I didn't do a very good job of it. I have to spend a lot more time at it. But it did what it said. We can edit just this area with that brush. And, you know, we can uh, take away contrast. We can add contrast. We can do whatever we want with it. If you wanted to. Um, sharpen the eyes uh, of, of a portrait you could do that with just this brush so that's what that's for and you can just edit little tiny areas 
And again, tons of possibilities with this adjustment brush. So I know I went over a lot of stuff here today. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns. I'd love to hear them. Greg Kazillo, Kazillo.com. Keep shooting. See ya.